in this image. Uh, does that image not look computer generated? I think you'd all agree that it looks like it was created in some Photoshop platform or something like that, some kind of graphics um, uh, platform. But in fact, that is sound made visible uh, using the Cymoscope instrument, which I'm going to introduce you to in a moment. And, uh, but before we get there, just to say, I think you can see in that image that there is three dimensionality. It's not, a, it's not a flat 2D image. If you look closely on the screen here, it is very, very 3D. And, um, but even there, I think you can see a three dimensionality. And this is because when water is, is, uh, is impressed, when you imprint sound onto water, you're not only structuring the surface of the water, but also s significantly into the depth of the water. You're organizing all of the molecules uh, with the sound. And that is why when the camera picks up that image, it's actually seeing some layers that are in clear focus and other layers that are further away and slightly out of focus. And that's the reason that you're seeing that effect. Also, just to mention, that this is the image of a male voice made visible. And you'll notice that it has seven-fold structure. And this is a strange thing, that this male voice, he was chanting when, uh, when we captured this image, almost every time that I image, um, um, whether male or a female, that are spiritually oriented, it's seven-fold. Now, I can't explain that, but I just thought I'd mention it because it is interesting. Something to think about. So, uh, this is my uh, little menu. We begin, we're going to begin with a water memory experiment, uh, a nice interesting topic for the day. And, um, and then we're going to go on to kind of the main part of the presentation, which is mentioned in the program. Uh, cymoscopic Planckian distribution equation analysis method, a bit of a mouthful, um, but it's concerning uh, differentiating between the sounds that cancer cell makes, uh, cancer cells make, and healthy cells make. So it's a very interesting and hopefully um, a, a will become a powerful method in the future. And then finally, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a I'm kind of laughing inwardly at this last one, abiogenesis, ocean seeding by comets, uh, because I'm hearing the voice of my, my parents who are saying to me, um, you sometimes tread where angels fear to tread. And, uh, you know, perhaps today will be one of those occasions. I'm not really sure. I'll leave you to, uh, to decide when we get to that point in the presentation. Anyway, so to begin. Before we get to the water memory experiment, let me just very quickly introduce you to the Cymoscope instrument, which I developed over a number of, of years. And I think you can see here what looks like a, a, a Petri dish. It's actually a fused quartz cuvette with a, f a black fused quartz bottom uh, to maximize the contrast. Into that little, uh, we, c we call it a visualizing cuvette, uh, we put a small volume of water, that particular uh, size of cuvette, we put 6.8 milliliters. And then you'll see that we have above here a light source that is firing. It's coaxial with the, uh, fu with the fused quartz cuvette, and it's uh, basically just firing light down into the water. And then in the body of the instrument here, we have a voice coil motor which is injecting sound directly a direct coupled into the water. And what happens when, when you do that is that you are effectively transposing the sonic periodicities to water wavelet periodicities and simply, in effect, making the sound visible. Um, and I know some of you will be thinking immediately, ah, but what about the electromechanical resonances in that system? Um, well, what we do simply to negate those is we tune them out by um, feeding in a characteristic in the signal processing software, which is the inverse of the resonant characteristics of that electromechanical system. So, in other words, when we put a sound in, we get an analog or a model of that sound as a pattern. Okay, so it's now geometry, basically. 
one more slide before we get into the water memory experiment, and this is just to um, answer a question that, again, has probably uh, immediately occurred to you. How can you image long wavelength sounds on a very small water membrane? And the reason um, is simply because of the compression ratio that exists between the density of air and the density of water. And that compression ratio at normal sea level and 20 degrees is uh, approximately 829 to 1. And it's actually the reason why I think our cochleas are able to also sense very long wavelengths. I give an example there of um, uh, the lowest note on a piano, 27.5 hertz, has a wavelength of uh, 12.37 meters. And uh, which you can, I mean, visualizing that, that's a long way. And yet the little 30 millimeter long cochlea, if you unwind it, it's about 30 millimeters, is, is able to sense that long wavelength. And I believe this is the reason, and it's also certainly the reason, why we are able to image um, very low frequency sounds. We, the bandwidth of the instrument goes down to three hertz, and it goes up to, uh, well, we can push it to 5K usually 3K, 3,000, but, but uh, we can, under some circumstances, go to 5K. So that's enough about the instrument. Uh, just also to say that um, this here is actually a photograph, literally a photograph, taken by the camera looking down into the water with that particular frequency. Okay, so, and you can see that the distance between each of these uh, rings here represents half a wavelength. Okay, that's enough of the, uh, of the technicalities.